All right, it's been five weeks. We have ourselves some really nicely rooted air layers. Um, and we're actually removing them today. You can see over here, we're gonna just very simply cut right below the sandwich bag where all the roots have formed. And just very simply now, we've removed it. And you can see the other side, there's some good root development. The roots are starting to harden up. And now we're gonna put these into larger pots and harden them off to our current conditions to get them fully adjusted from uh, being away from the mother now. Like an 18 year old that's left home. They have to adjust to now living on their own. All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today, we're gonna talk about air layer removal. So we're gonna be removing air layers on our fig tree. And I wanna talk about when. When is really the good time or a good time to remove our air layers, to then separate them away from the mother tree to now have ourselves an exact copy of the mother tree and then have that tree then on its own roots. Um, that was really the most common question we had after the last air layering video we did. We also had a very common question about this tin foil and how in very you know past videos that I've done on air layering, we've talked about tin foil and why tin foil I believe is important. Uh, right now, we can start off with the tin foil really quickly is that in the last video, we mentioned actually that the temperature is really critical for achieving root development with these air layers. And if we don't have a temperature that averages around 78 degrees Fahrenheit, at the location of the air layer, well then we're going to struggle. We're not gonna see the root development that we want if it's not warm, or if it's too warm, potentially we can even kill the air layer, kill the branch along the air layer. So we wanna be as close to 78 degrees Fahrenheit as possible. That's the best optimal metabolic rate for our fig trees. And in terms of propagation, that's also a really critical temperature. So when it comes to you know, temperatures that we may have in the summer in the 90s, well then we wanna have tin foil over top of our air layers because we don't want the sun to hit our air layers. If the sun's gonna hit the air layer, whether it's plastic, whether it's black pots, whether it's whatever material that you guys are using to hold that soil around the branch, well, that's gonna potentially warm up the sides, right? And it's gonna create a warmer soil. And therefore we're gonna be further away from that 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if indeed it was later in the season, like it is now, we're at the middle of August. And actually I would argue this is probably the last time, maybe you could get away with a September 1st air layer, but the later in the season we go, the colder it gets, the further away we get from that 78 degree average. And I think a nice little solution actually is to use plastic bags like these sandwich bags method here that I've, I've mentioned and let this just get hit by the sun. Don't actually put the tin foil on. So I'm gonna be tin foiling most of these air layers here that are in the sunlight that you guys see. I just put these on very recently to kind of squeeze in the last little air layers of my season. We had pinched some of our fig trees and we got really good branching that formed. And I figured, wow, it'd be a good opportunity to propagate some more of that particular variety. Um, but as it is very late now, we're getting a bit cooler. It's definitely not, although today was 90 degrees, we want to make sure that we're keeping things a little bit warmer as we go down in the next couple weeks, because uh, this is really the critical moment. This is the critical time. And then of course, we just need to see good root development after we already have that root formation, which again, relies on that 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So, that was the, the question I got. It was like, Ross, well, if you're putting the air layers on, you recommended in the past that you put on the tin foil. Why aren't you doing the tin foil now? Well, because a lot of those air layers weren't in the sun. They were on the ground in the shade and they weren't getting hit by the sun. Um, but if it was in the sunlight like this and it is combined with just really warm temperatures that we're seeing during the day and it's sunny, well, then probably we want to add that tin foil to decrease the temperature. But again, it can actually be a positive when using black plastic or excuse me, clear plastic or black pots later on in the season to actually warm up that area there that we're trying to see root development in. 
Um, in terms of when we're removing our air layers, that's the topic, the real topic of today's video. And that's really all about just having some patience. Really, there's no rush. I think that's the main message. Um, because the second we remove these air layers, when we make the cut right below where we put the air layer on, we remove this, now this tree is on its own. Well, if you look at this particular air layer, I have a bunch of figs. In fact, one here is ripening. There's some more up there. We have leaves on the tree. So there's a balance that has to happen between the roots that have formed down here on the bottom and what's on top. So we can almost kind of picture this as like a fraction, right? And that if we have only, let's say five down here on the denominator of the fraction, well then we can't have any more than five at the top, right? We can have less than five at the top. We can have four, a fraction of four over five, but if we have six over five, well then the roots are not gonna be able to support what's on top. And we're gonna really struggle to probably ripen these figs to get good quality on those figs. Also to maybe even support these leaves. I mean, that's really the main concern. When you have an air layer and you remove it, most of the time you gotta remove these figs. Almost every single situation I would probably remove them because these leaves are gonna really struggle to be able to be supported actually by what's on bottom. The mother tree, which was in this 15 gallon size pot is no longer supporting this air layer with food and water. So now it's on its own roots and there's a shock period, just like transplant shock. When we take, you know, a, a tree in a smaller container and we up pot it into a larger container, well then there's a shock period. Or if we even just move our plants into a different environment, whether we have a change in humidity, a change in light, a change in temperature, a change in wind, whatever it is. Um, the same thing happens and it's even more extreme, I would argue, with these air layers. So we really gotta have some finesse. We really gotta be careful about choosing when because we can't go back. Once it's removed, it's, it's removed. You know, it's like you can't undo a surgery, right? You can't remove somebody's limb and then attach it right back on um, and then everything's fine, right? Everything's the way it was. So the big message here is to have some patience, but what you guys are gonna really wanna look for is good root development solid root formation and for me at least i'll show you this one over here there's really quite a few in the yard i've probably put on somewhere over 200 air layers this year um you really want to see something that really feels fills this bag you know uh some really solid roots that are um really filling up the container that you have uh selected to house the soil to wrap that around the branch um there's a certainly a quantity of roots and it's hard to really quantify that but again you could put a number onto every air layer right you could give every single air layer a fraction and assign a number to the numerator and assign a number to the denominator so you have to realize what that number is on the bottom and you have to be comfortable with that number um, the best case scenario is that if we remove this air layer we don't have to remove any of the leaves, but that's pretty difficult to do. Not always the case because if we don't have enough roots down below, these are some air layers actually that I removed a couple weeks ago. And by removing them, putting them in this larger container, the only thing I really could do to make sure that the fraction was in balance was remove some of these leaves. So again, the fraction was probably something like, well, this was seven over five and we had too much on top, not enough on bottom. So I had to remove leaves to adjust and make sure that this tree was gonna be okay. Now it's finally in balance and it's being able to support this. And very soon, some of these like this one here is kind of already starting to grow. Um, but the best case scenario would be, again, if we removed our air layer, we had such a good root mass on bottom that it actually was able to support everything on top and the fraction was perfect. But almost, does that ever happen? Almost never. I mean, it's pretty rare. You have to have a really big root system with a big air layer on the bottom. Um, so something like these, these stool air layers that I do, where I basically wrap the bottom of the trunk of the tree with a larger pot. When I remove this, 
it probably will be able to be supported but i like to wait actually for most of my air layers to the very end of the season there's no rush as i said there absolutely is no rush i even wait after frost i wait until my trees actually get hit by a number of frosts they're entering into dormancy and then i remove the air layer because if we think about these air layers again as a fraction well if we don't have any leaves at the top but we have all this root mass down here at the bottom because the frost came in and actually made these trees dormant we lost all of our leaves well then that's zero in the numerator and let's say five in the denominator so we have absolutely nothing to worry about all we have to do is just make sure we don't overwater our tree throughout the winter time during dormancy and uh we'll have ourselves a really nice air layer come spring when everything wakes up i've done that for many years and there's no rush again there is absolutely no rush so for me that's when i actually prefer i would rather do this the air layer removal process also on a cloudy day on a cooler day on a more humid day so if you're going to be removing these in the summer like i did these you got to be real careful careful and that whole air layer removal process of transitioning them away from that period of shock and getting them adjusted to the current conditions and on their own that's a video for another time we're going to be putting that out very soon i hope so i would really uh thank uh, thank you guys again for watching that's really when to remove them a lot of the thoughts around removing them uh the root mass that you guys should be looking for and then again we talked a little bit about the tin foil so hopefully you guys are having good success with your air layers and you're having also a really good fig season ours now that we're in the middle of august is kicking like you wouldn't believe we got some really nice figs that we've ripened so far this year stay tuned for that we'll see you guys soon hit that subscribe button check out our blog figboss.com see you guys for the next air layer video peace out